Sup nerds, this is Akrai, not Akral, Akrel, or however you think you'd like to pronounce it. Just Rai is fine. I've been getting a lot of comments from you guys on my walkthrough videos, most of them questions about how to create certain elements from some of the builds that I've made. I appreciate your feedback a lot, and if I can help you recreate anything I've made, I'd really like to. So here it is, my first ever video tutorial. The video where I get by far the most views, comments and questions is Forever Hingen. This build was a commission I finished back in September 2019, so I'm quite amazed that so many of you are still interested in it. In this video I'm going to show you how to create a one floor version of the garden element from this build. You'll need to know how to do some basic glitching and floating already, but in case you don't, I'll leave some links to some good guides in the description below. You're also going to need a bunch of housing items, obviously, which also will be listed down there. To start the build, I measure out where I'd like the element to be placed. Since the embrace is our biggest furnishing that needs to go as far back to the wall as possible, I use that as a measuring tool. I like to use the bathroom wall tiles placed as low as it goes on a stage panel to mark the spot where I want my dividers to show up, but any big sized wall mounted item will easily do the trick. As you can see, the wall tiles stick through the floor and easily shows me where to put down my dividers. Use the grid snap function to line up the walls and then float them all the way up through the ceiling. Pixel perfection isn't necessary, but try to make them somewhat even in height. Now that we have our bottom dividers in place, it's easy to make our top walls align with them. Place them using grid snap and float them up about a window's height. Take out three paper partitions and line them up like pillars. I like to use grid snap and looking at the patterns on the floor to get the placement even. When you're happy with the size of your garden, it's time to get the fool's threshold windows out. Place them on a stage panel and glitch them in backwards, next to the outer paper partitions. I put them in backwards to get the rays of light to fall in the garden, rather than in the room itself. The windows are easy to line up with each other using the place anywhere glitch, but there are other methods that will allow more precision. After the windows are in place, you can float your top walls to the correct height, using the windows as guides. Now we have a good skeleton to work with and it's time to get some detailing in here. Whatever you're doing in housing, it's always good to start with the items that will give you the most grief. In this case, that will be the embrace. You can use more precise measurement if you'd like, but personally I just eyeball the placement in the basement, float it up through the ceiling and rotate it to get my desired effect.
Next is the verdant partitions. If you'd like a less symmetric feeling, you can slightly rotate them instead of leaving them straight like this, or even float them from the basement. To give us the illusion of a zen garden, I used combed wool rugs. These are dyed pure white, but leaving them undyed or snow white works just as well. I use grid snap when rotating them to make sure I get straight line patterns in the sand. To simulate a water puddle, I'm using the pudding throw rug dyed sky blue, placing it so the head of the pudding is hidden. For that extra hingen feel to my foliage, I'm using bamboo planters floated from the basement to hide the boxes in the bottom. To make the sliding doors stay open permanently, you can use one of the NPC permits and hide it in the back of the garden, behind the verdant partitions. As long as it's close enough to the sliding door, it will keep it open, and if it's far enough back, the NPC nameplate won't show either. The original build used three bamboo planters, but as you can see, two are just fine if you'd like to save slots. Lighting is very important to get the right ambience. I pull down the light setting to zero and use glade lanterns from the vendor to give the garden a natural glow. Carbuncle lanterns are very useful to give the water a blue backlight and a little extra sparkle. What you choose to decorate your garden with is entirely up to your personal taste. I've chosen a few items I personally like, but they're easily changeable, and the same goes for the lighting. Of course, I'm a big fan of extra lighting, so I'll always push it to be extra. And that's it! The garden is done! I hope this was helpful and potentially a little inspiring for your future housing adventures. If you'd like to see more content like this, please hit the like and subscribe buttons below. Thanks for watching!